Welcome back or hello if you're new here. Today we're going to be talking about more horror and thriller books that I've been reading recently. These are books that are perfect to get you into the summer season and I have again something for everyone. I have books about the devil made me do it. We have skincare horror. We have slasher books. If you're looking for something creepy while you are out in the sun, I got you covered. If you're in Australia, I'm sorry I know it's winter there, but all that being said, let's get started. First, let's talk about Final Slaughter by Sergio Gomez, and this is the third book in the trilogy that started with Camp Slaughter, a book that I previously described and still stand by the fact that it's one of the most scary, messed up books that I have read. It just has a really terrifying, nightmare-fueled prologue that sticks in my brain and will not go away. And so I read the second book, really enjoyed it, and now the final book is out. I think slashers are just perfect for summer, and there's just something that's just very enjoyable. It's clear the author has a love for the movie version of these stories and of course then brings it to the pages. I can't say too much about the plot because it kind of follows the usual slasher setup where it is like having the survivors once again kind of revisit and is it all done or is there more going on and so forth and so I'll just say that this one was exactly what I was looking for. If you enjoyed the first book and the second you'll enjoy this one too. I think it's very much on the same page. It's just a great balance between characters that you care enough about that when something happens to them because something will happen to them you will will worry and care for their survival and in some cases the fact that they will not survive. I love that the author writes a brutal world, does not shy away from taking down main characters and so again you really get invested in the story. It's a good balance of action with still again having that personal emotional connection that for me makes these kind of books work and it's as you would expect brutal. It definitely has some gory moments, some kill scenes, all of that and I think it's done in a way that feels tasteful but definitely doesn't shy away from those aspects. I've had people in my comments say that they're kind of frustrated that horror books just don't really go there anymore and are just a bit too light and soft in their presentation so if you're looking for something that is just a straight up horror book that is going to go there. Of course you do want to start back at the beginning with Camp Slaughter but it's definitely worth it and you can binge through the books, get up to this one and hopefully enjoy it as much as I did. Next up we have Craft by Amanda Lima. This is one that I received for review from the publisher Tor Nightfire and this is one that is really unique in terms of formatting. It's somewhat of a short story collection but my favorite kind of short story collection where it's all interwoven into one narrative and so the setup for this is that the author one day on Halloween slept with the devil and then it follows everything that happens afterwards so it's like a series of vignettes it feels very slice of life but it has this connecting thread and for me that's what I really love about short stories is when they have that element that ties them all together and they're not just random because otherwise you always have to say that some are stronger than others but these really do work as a collection because they're meant to be read as one work and that's definitely something that works very well for me. I'll be honest, when I first read this book, I wasn't really sure what I thought of it, and I actually went back and reread it before providing this review, because it is different than I thought it would be. It really is slice of life in the way that it's very subtle, it's very quiet, it's kind of the opposite of the last book I talked about, where it is much more perhaps psychological or kind of that eerie undertones. I think if you're someone who really enjoys kind of those like visual novels that have those kind of creepy atmospheric parts to them, this is kind of the same experience I had here and I ended up really enjoying it once I got my head wrapped around what I was reading and went back to it and ended up loving it quite a lot. Obviously I read a physical arc this time but I'm going to watch for when it's published and see if I can get my hands on the audio version because I have a feeling that a book like this will work really well when it's spoken to me just because again it's kind of subtle and quiet and then just kind of gets dark and strange and eerie and I think that that works really well when spoken out loud. So this is definitely one to watch. It's one that I will likely again reread at least once more before my final end of the year content and so far I think it's just a really special unique book, something a little bit different which is always what I'm looking for with my horror. Next up is Youth Juice and this is an adult novel that follows a woman who gets the opportunity to work for this luxury skincare company and she doesn't really know a lot about the beauty industry but takes it as a job and gets pulled into this bigger darker world and soon enough discovers when she's asked to test this particular skincare finding out that there is more behind it all. Now this book is marketed as a Devil Wears Prada because you have a character who's very much out of their comfort zone, kind of an ugly duckling who doesn't 
lean into the business of beauty but kind of falls into it anyway and it's compared to American Psycho because of its dark over-the-top satire and it's a comparison that I actually think works really well. It's clear the author had some inspiration from The Devil Wears Prada. I happen to love that movie so I did not mind that and I can definitely see the same overtones of American Psycho. It's not the same. I don't think it's as good but keep in mind American Psycho is one of my all-time favorite novels but as a book this one really held up. I thought it was a debut novel but I understand the author has written other things under a different name and so I went to this one feeling like it was kind of a good book but perhaps missing some of the potential. I'd love to see this author get a little bit more punchy with the concept. So I like this one. It was good. It had nice prose. It had nice concept. Kind of leans into some of the like the mean girl culture, which is the friendship toxicity I'm always here for. And so there's a lot of great things going on with this book. And mostly I wanted it to go further. I wanted it to be a little bit more cutting, especially if you're going to make comparisons to American Psycho. I want the book to go there and go there unflinchingly. But I felt like the author tiptoed a little bit or was just a little bit more soft-footed in their pacing and narrative. Well, if I was in charge of this book, if I were the one editing or writing it, I would have encouraged them to just go straight for the punchiest parts. But that being said, there definitely are moments in this book I just wanted even more. And so again, definitely an author to watch. This one is an early favorite of the year. In terms of concept, I think it's great. The beauty industry, let's be honest, is kind of terrible to us women. And I think that this book makes a lot of great commentary on there and turns it into a fantastic little horror story. Next is a translated book called Whispers. This is one I've had my eye on forever and I finally bit the bullet and went ahead and bought a copy of this book because I couldn't get it anywhere and I really wanted to check it out for myself. So this is a story that follows a man of Taiwanese background. He is a taxi driver. He is just a really curmudgeonly unlikable fellow. His wife has died and he's just going through life doing terrible things and just being a terrible person all around. You find out that he was very abusive and just, again, not a nice person. If you're someone who goes into books looking for someone you want to spend time with, someone to be a potential imaginary best friend, not this man. I think he's pretty despicable. However, within the story, he starts to hear voices in different languages and believes that this voice is connected to the death of his wife. And so he starts to want to track it down and potentially this voice or whatever is behind this voice might be coming for him. So this is very much a piece of psychological horror, which will always work better with some readers than others. I thought the concept was really great. Again, and the main character could not be more unlikable, but I think it's purposely done and it kind of fits into the story and you just kind of follow it along. And I like the pieces of it. I know it has a lot of interesting commentary around Taiwanese culture and the country. And so I think that there's some really important commentary woven into the story that in some ways perhaps went over my head in places just because I don't have that background or knowledge. But again, it's the kind of book that makes me want to read more and learn more. And I always think it's a positive thing in fiction when it draws me to actually go and do some research and learn something beyond what is on the fictional page. So overall, I like this one. It wasn't a top, top favorite. I didn't get quite as psychologically immersed as they want, and that's really the kicker here, is I think if you can get yourself completely pulled into the story, forget everything else, and just become obsessed with it, I imagine the story could be so much more psychologically effective. For me, I never got to that stage. I was really trying to just let myself fall into the story and get just lost in it. Never quite happened. I still liked it. It's still, again, a potential early favorite for a backlist title but it's definitely one again maybe I'll revisit like it a little bit more I think it's good and at the very least it's under hype people often come to my channel saying I want something I haven't read before give me something that you haven't talked about in the past I'm trying always to find new recommendations for you so if you're looking for something less well known more under hyped there you go I recommend whispers today next up we have Cujo by Stephen King and if you're on my channel you'll know that I don't actually read and review a lot of King these days I put him on my TBR but they also turn to a lot of DNFs this is one that I didn't even have in my spring TBR. I just picked it up on a lark and ended up really enjoying it. Of course, it is a story that follows a family. There is the dog Cujo, and that is all I knew going into it. And honestly, I think all you need to know. Um, anytime you deal with a horror book involving a pet and Stephen King, just know that potential content warnings may occur. There definitely is some potential harm to this dog in the case of this story. But as a piece of horror, 
I found this one to be very engaging and it kind of reminded me of why I continue to go back to Stephen King because every once in a while the book just hits the right spot. This of course is more of his classic work and I can really see why people praise these days of Stephen King. I think the story did a great job of capturing the unease of the town. It's probably one of the first books I've read that's set in Castle Rock. I know there's a whole series of them but I think this might be my first unless I'm mistaken so feel free to correct me if you keep track of my reading more than I do. And so I just loved kind of getting to see the town, the family, and I just thought the book had a really strong start where it had the sense of unease. There were kind of terrible people doing terrible things and it also leaned a lot into the nostalgia of youth. There's part that deals with sugary cereal and other kind of nostalgic bits that I think for readers that are my age or perhaps even older will really recognize what the author is kind of referencing. It just made for a lot of fun reading, very enjoyable. Perhaps the book was a bit longer than it needed to be. I think the book kind of overstayed its welcome, but I say that about pretty much every Stephen King story. So this one wasn't actually too bad in terms of length. I enjoyed this one for the most part. I thought it was really engaging. I'm glad I read it. And again, it's the kind of book that makes me want to read more Stephen King. So again, please keep recommending me your favorite Stephen King books in the comment section. And I will slowly pick away at them and hopefully find some more favorites to add to my list. Next up is Battle Royale, of course, the classic translated Japanese book that follows a group of students that are forced to kill off each other in this messed up game and try to be the sole survivor. This is a concept that has, of course, been redone in different things like Squid Games. It's been rewritten as things like The Hunger Games. And I was very interested to pick it up because, again, it's such an iconic piece that has been so influential in other books. I really am trying to go back and make sure that I'm reading the books that kind of inspired things that I'm reading now. And so I have to say that this book worked a lot better than I actually thought it would. It's very action-packed, very ultra-violent, which are not normally actually my buzzwords. I don't have a problem with ultra-violent, gory books, but it's not really the reason I pick up books anymore. I'm much more of a character-driven reader and much more someone who loves literary prose. And I kind of change what I'm looking for when I pick up horror books, I'll be honest. But thankfully, while this book is ultra-gory, it also has really detailed character work because you get to know each student before they're typically killed off and you follow them and so every student in the class has their own little short story. You get to know their background and really care for them and then of course something happens and along the way and it's a book that is again quite long and you think it would be repetitive but somehow I found myself quite engaged and again I've read so many copycat books of it that I thought this book would feel really reused or tired, but instead it somehow felt fresh. I just think that the original really holds up. So if you're someone like me who held off reading the original because you've read too many books like it since then, since it's been published and translated, I encourage you go back to the beginning, go back to the original work that inspired everything that came afterwards, and I think it really does hold up. Highly recommend. It was gripping, it was bloody, but in a really good way, and just yeah, an enjoyable read that I'm glad I was able to tick off my list of books that I probably should have read by now. And last I have Moon Lake by Joe Lansdale and this is more of a thriller coming of age story rather than a horror book. It really has no horror elements to it. We follow a young boy who as a child something happened to his family. His mother left them and then his father went and committed a horrible act. He ended up killing himself and his son was potentially going to be brought along on that terrible journey. And so it follows this young man as he's trying to move on from his life. He has no parents there to guide him and we follow him now as an adult as he's coming back to that town and trying to just revisit everything, figure out what happened, what broke his family apart. And so again, it's very much to the nostalgic of the past, a character-driven narrative that's really much more introspective. And so there is technically a mystery to the story. There is a little bit of a twist, but if you read a lot of these books, you'll probably see that twist coming a mile away. I know I did, but it didn't detract from the story at all because I would argue you're not really reading it for the mystery or for any twist. You're reading it for the story, for the character, and that was fantastic. I have read this author before, but this is the first time I've really connected with their work. In the past, I have liked their stories but didn't love them. This one I loved. I thought it was just a really gripping narrative that left me thinking about it and just wanting to spend time with this character and just feeling their emotional loss and just the horrible things that have happened. It's the kind of book that reminds me over and over again why I keep revisiting coming of age stories. I think I didn't really get them when I was younger. Now that I'm getting a little bit older and I know it's all relative, right? But I am finding myself more nostalgic for my youth, for my childhood, and seeing that in another character is very interesting to play out and kind of 
tugs on my own heartstrings, which apparently do exist even for this black-hearted reader. So I highly recommend this one. If you're looking for a place to start with this author's work, in my mind, this is the best one I've read so far. And if you have other recommendations for this author, please leave them down below in the comments. If I can get my hands on them, I will definitely check them out. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to know the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? And please let me know what is the book you're reading to beat the heat this summer. I would love to hear about it and perhaps add it to my own TBR if I have time. So if you're new to my channel, consider sticking around and subscribing. I do read a lot of horror thrillers as well as science fiction fantasy. And if you want to help me out with this video, you can give me a thumbs up, drop a little comment, even if it's just a little emoji, and hit that little notification bell. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.